Welcome to Middlesex Moments, the radio and now television show produced by Middlesex Community College in Middletown, Connecticut. I'm Steve Minkler, the Academic Dean and Lead Campus Administrator of the College, and your host for these programs. On Middlesex Moments, we hope to introduce you to everything that the College has to offer as the College of our community. You'll get to meet faculty and staff, some of our students, learn about our academic programs and events that are happening on campus and the ways that we work closely with people in our community, the businesses, social service agencies, and places that surround us so that we, we work together to make a better community. With me today, my first guest on our first television show is Christine Ruggiero, who is Professor of English here at the college. How are you, Christine? Hi, Steve. Thanks for having me. And thanks I'm doing for being well. here. Good. Now, how long have you been at the college? I've been here since 2004. Okay. And um, I know our English department's a fantastic department, and we have all sorts of classes from uh, developmental English to the upper levels. What, what kind of courses do you teach at the college? Um, usually I teach um, English composition and an accelerated learning program, mm -hmm. which is a spin-off of English composition, and literature, as well as creative writing courses. Okay. Well, and creative writing is really kind of one of your passions, right? One of your specialties? Absolutely. Yeah. It is. It is a passion. Okay. And what kind of things happen in a creative writing class? Um, well, at first, sometimes a lot of angst because it's, you know, you're asking students to be vulnerable, to write about sometimes personal and often really tragic, maybe, experiences. Um, but it's a close-knit group, and we share our writing. We do some modeling and you know, look at um, poets and then try and do some modeling to try and find voice and style of the student's own. And then we, we get into groups and we workshop our pieces. Mm -hmm. So students share their work with each other and then give some constructive feedback. We just make sure that we spend a lot of time on how to give that constructive feedback. Right. Because some students feel like they don't have the language with which to offer anything constructive. They're like, I don't know poetry, you know, how am I going to or I'm not a fiction writer. Mm -hmm. So we do spend a lot of time to making sure students are comfortable. But they do a lot of writing and a lot of sharing. Okay. i got to imagine it's a really powerful experience for the students and for you to really kind of find what their voice is and what, they're, what they want to say and how to say it. It is. It's, it's one of the best experiences, I think. I, when I have seen students blossom and find a voice when they felt like they never had one before. They feel like they have an, an audience for their voice. And they can use their work to um, explore. Sometimes it can be cathartic, you know. Um, and I really see students blossom through the process. And it's not an easy process to be vulnerable and release our, our writing, which is so personal, sure. you know, to, to everybody else. So it yeah. is. Now, there's some ways that students can share their work outside of the classroom. Absolutely. So we try to have um, host a poetry reading at least two a semester. And um, on both occasions, I ask students to be part of the reading. Um, we usually have a published poet come to the college, and that's one opportunity, and then at the end of um, every semester. Okay. Well, great. And I think uh, after the break, we have to take a quick break. After the break, we're going to meet one of the students from your creative writing class, Mari Spallone, who was selected as a Connecticut Poetry Circuit student winner. So we look forward to meeting Mari after the break. Stay tuned. At Middlesex Community College, we think your plan A should be a high-impact, low-cost college education, preferably with no student loans required. Get started on your plan A. with all this paint. I sorted out all the paint that we could still use and this is what's left over. It shouldn't go into the trash. It's bad for the environment. All right. 
but what should we do with it? Good news. Residents can now recycle their unwanted paint, and it's free. For drop-off locations near you, go to paintcare.org. I'm glad that it's so convenient to drop off our old paint. And now, we can clean out the rest of the garage. Oh. <laughs> Welcome back to Middlesex Moments from Middlesex Community College. I'm Stephen Minkler, and today we're exploring the creative writing aspect of our English department here at Middlesex Community College. Uh, before our break, I was talking with Professor Christine Ruggiero, who's still with us, but joining us now is Mari Spallone, who's a student at the college. Hi, Mari. Thanks for coming. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me. Welcome. Happy and and what, what inspired you to take a creative writing class with Christine? Uh, well, I've always been interested in writing, but I didn't really feel like I had the, um, the ability or the experience, maybe not the ability so much, um, as I wanted to learn the craft. And I haven't done a whole lot of writing. Um, I've done some journaling, some notes. Um, my main interest was pretty much in um, memoir and personal and essay. I love to write. Mm -hmm. I love to read. Mm -hmm. and. So when you took the class, mm -hmm. were there any topics that you had in mind, things that you wanted to explore through your writing? Well, topics or, um, I mean, style of writing, I was pretty much interested in short story and, like I mentioned, personal right. essay and memoir. So it was really Christine's class that introduced me to poetry. And mm -hmm. um, I'm here today. <laughs> okay. Well, and Christine, I mean, yeah. when we were working with Mari and the other students in your class, I th we were talking about how it's really powerful for you to help them find their authentic voice. And what was it like working with Mari as a student in your class? It was a pleasure. <laughs> it really was. Um, Mari, w I would say, is really her work and, and as a student is really unassuming. I mean, you know, she worked, I think, right, if, if I'm correct, that you work in business. I did. For most mm -hmm. of her life. And mm -hmm. so um, it was really a, a, a really pleasant surprise for, for me when I read her pieces. You know, I thought, oh, wow, I think there's really a poet within Mari. <laughs> and, um, and it really became clear, I think, by the second piece that she wrote that she had a distinct, seasoned, developed voice and style all her own. And that's not really something, I mean, you can help students find it, but there are some things that I don't know what it is, you know, that sort of je ne sais quoi that, you know, you can't really, it eludes description. And Mari just had that, had that something. And Mari, what was it like when you were in the creative writing poetry class to have completed your first poem that you wanted to share with the class? Uh, describe a little what that felt to you to read your poem aloud to your classmates. Well, we, um, we gathered in small groups for workshops, so it was a pretty comfortable experience for me. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I think mm -hmm. you, you also had shared some of your poems at our uh, poetry festivals that we have on campus. So you, so were you able to share it with a larger audience? Right? I did. Yeah. I read one poem, one poem. when we had um, Sophia here. Mm -hmm. okay. and, and, mm -hmm. and from there, working with Christine, you had applied to um, the Connecticut Poetry Circuit um, as uh, someone, you know, you expressed an interest in mm -hmm. uh, having your work considered for this honor. And, and what process uh, was involved in, um, in applying to be part of the Connecticut Poetry Circuit? Well, it was pretty straightforward. Christine helped me a lot. She was, um, we were able to submit, I think it was four or five poems, and you know, I, they were actually all poems that I worked on in Christine's class. Um, poetry was really new to me, okay. and um, so. I can add a little yeah, bit to Yeah, thanks, anything. because, so, yeah. Um, it's, it comes on nomination. That's how students are selected. So I nominated Mari. And the colleges and universities in Connecticut, um, among those, faculty can nominate one student from each school to be considered for the circuit. And ultimately, the panel of judges choose five students. So Mari is one you know, among five who are touring the state, mm -hmm. reading her poems. So it was a nomination process you know, submissions anonymous, you don't, you know, so there's no bias or anything for the judges to right. read. Mm -hmm. well, and Mari, uh, being one of the five, you're the only community college student to have been selected for this honor. 
for this, I think for 2018, yeah. I think that's that's right. We have um, this Trinity College and Wesleyan, Yale, and there is um, Qu oh, Qu Quinnipiac. Quinnipiac. Yes, yep. okay. yeah, right. yeah, yeah. And they're from all over Florida, South Florida, Philadelphia, okay. Vietnam, wow. and um, mm -hmm. and as and as part of being um, on the poetry <laughs> circuit, what what does that entail? Do you do you um, attend events and, and share your poetry uh, at other venues? Uh, yes, we do. We do readings um, at the colleges, the, the other four poets um, at all their colleges, well, all except for one, and then we um, we're hosted okay. sometimes for dinners. Uh, we will stand up in front of a group of folks and, nice. and read our poetry, mm. and yeah, it's very inspiring. The other poets are, they're great, a really nice group to work with. Mm. Sounds great. And, and mm -hmm. Christine, have we had other students who've been selected for this honor in the past at Middlesex Community College? So since the circuit started in 1968, we have had, I think Mari is the fourth winner. Um, I'll never forget the first, I mean, I'll never forget the first because his name was Jerry Maguire. Didn't know him, but it was in the 70s. But then sort of creative running kind of waned at the college for a, a good while, maybe throughout the 90s at least to early 2000s and then since 2005 we've had Mari's the third winner. Okay. Such a great honor yeah. too. Yeah. So Mari, you, you brought some of the poems that you submitted for the Poetry Circuit and um, I know it would be a, an honor for us to hear you uh, read some of your poems and, and what, what have you selected first to share with us? Okay, well, I think um, the first poem I'll read is, it's a short poem, and this was done in Christine's class. Um, it was done as an exercise on a metaphor, okay. and it's called Yoga Class. We ready? Okay. Tiptoeing into the room, finding a spot not too close to or too far from the other yogis. I take a blanket and blocks, unroll my mat, and sit cross-legged an awkward statue. I set a vague intention for my practice today, go from one pose to the next, move in and out of my comfort zone, a downward dog, a child, an airplane, a happy baby, grabbing my toes, blissful. At the end, relaxation in corpse pose. Take what you need and leave the rest. Your body knows what you need, even if you don't, the instructor tells us. Slipping into my flip-flops, I thank myself for showing up. Great. So what was it like for you, the experience of putting that down on paper for you? And it was, um, the process was interesting. Um, it didn't, the inspiration, it didn't come too quickly, but then I, just um, thought of a, an everyday event mm -hmm. and tried to capture it. Right. And then there's some revision, a lot of, actually a lot of revision involved in a lot of poetry. Yeah, so it doesn't mm -hmm. just all come out in one right. sitting, right? I think this would probably be a lot different from the first draft of it. Sometimes okay. it, it comes out, but. And, and in terms of the drafting process, what, what kind of things kind of come in and out? Is it a matter of word choice or a selection of, again, trying to make sure that that metaphoric theme is followed pretty faithfully? What, what kind of things mm -hmm. come in and out of the revision process? Well, research is one thing that, you know, you hadn't really thought about, but, um, you know, in some pieces I just want to make sure that, you know, I'm not saying something that um, that isn't, true mm -hmm. that's I think you know poetry if if it's nothing it, it's supposed to be true and um, and I might just think of something during the day a way to phrase um, a thought better or sure and, and if these thoughts occur to you during the day do you you said earlier that you do you have journaled and you, mm -hmm. and you do keep journals is that something a, a particular inspiration happens and you make sure that you want to capture that right away so you don't forget it well, I have my smartphone, so nice. sometimes I use um, <laughs> audio messages or notes or, right. you know, I have a notebook that I carry around with me or just a scrap of paper, stick it notes in my car. Okay. Yeah. And, and um, Christine, do you, f do you find that in, in terms of trying to help your students go through the revision and creation process, um, 
did it seem to come a little easier for Mari than others, or, or what's your experience in teaching the craft of poetry? Well, with Mari, it was it was easy. I mean, she was completely open to suggestion and comments, and really, it's a lot of it is also trying on and playing. So, you know, students start with one piece, and then I say, well, you know, save yoga class as yoga class one, yoga class two. So they kind of number it and then play each time. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes if you over revise, you can lose some of the rawness that might have given a poem sort of its, its oomph, you know, to start with. So um, it is. And some students, you know, I think it takes a lot. Sometimes I'll write, it's difficult for me to critique this because of the nature of the, the piece, the subject matter. It might be difficult, could be the loss of a pet or of a loved one or, you know, something like that. And so I am, I try to be, you know, really careful, but also it's my job to then help them make the piece, um, you know, what they want it to be, so. All right. Well, we have to take a quick break now from Middlesex Moments, and when we come back, more with Christine Ruggiero and Mari Spallone, and we'll hear a few more of Mari's poems when we come back. Stay tuned. Honey, where's my brown coat? Check the back closet. Ah! Why do we have these old computers in the closet? Well, I can't put them in the trash. It's bad for the environment. I just don't know what to do with them. Good news. Connecticut residents can now recycle their unwanted computers, monitors, printers, TVs, and it's free. Contact your town for drop-off locations or go to www.ct.gov slash recycle. And we're back with Middlesex Moments coming to you from Middlesex Community College here in Middletown. And we've been learning more about the creative writing courses within the English department here at the college. And with me today has been Christine Ruggiero, professor of English, and Mari Spallone, who is a student, but also a winner of the Connecticut Poetry Circuit Student Competition. Um, before our last break, Mari read one of the poems that she shared with um, the poetry competition. And you have a couple more for us that you, you want to read and share with us today, right? I do. So, um, yes. so what's the next poem you're going to read for us? This is Drive to New York. Okay. A house, gray, quiet, asleep for the night. The cars on the busy street have stopped streaming by. You can imagine the fretful lines creasing her forehead, unfading. The sound of quiet hums in her head, and she's tired from working all week. So she turns in, very soon sees a vision of headlights, brighten her eyes, now closed. Lids fluttering, worrisome thoughts working their way in. A car travels down a dark wooded road, stops now and then. Hoses from pumps at closed gas stations are drained into the tank. The teenage girl tiptoes past the mother whispers, sorry I'm late, we ran out of gas, love you. What she didn't say is we drove to New York. The girl now cares for her mother, whose memories merge with reality, a blurry line, dimmed. One morning she's angry and terrified. She'd had a bad dream, believing she'd been up all night, driving the children to New York. Christine, you were really taken by that. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that this was the poem that once I read it, I, I thought I need to you know, submit Mari's work for the poetry circuit. And it made me ask Mari, you know, do you write? Do you have other poems? You know, so we started having a conversation a little bit about, um, about poetry and Mari's mm -hmm. background 
with writing poetry. I just, I, I can relate to it personally as mm -hmm. well, so I think that um, that had something to do with it, but her, her word choice is so beautiful, and she uses a lot of um, alliteration, you know, like worrisome thoughts working their way in, and a lot of S sounds, and just, it's beautifully done. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, I, when you were reading it, I, I felt the same way. It's something that I felt I could identify with, but also uh, your use of, of words and the, and the choice of the words that you uh, put into this poem really um, describe it. I, I could envision, you know, closing my eyes, I could see um, the narrator and I could see the scenes that you were describing to us. It was just really incredible. So thank you for that. Well, thank you. That's good to hear. There's, <laughs> there's a lot of, there's great imagery and mm -hmm. I think that setting up what happened is really important to understand how the memories blurred you know the lines are blurred at the end for where the mother is now in her life yeah. mm -hmm. so you have uh, another you'd like to share I do okay. yes I do um, this next poem it was um, actually was inspired by a, a quick trip to the Connecticut Historical Society um, to visit the museum, and um, I wound up in their, their library. This is Sanborn Maps. My grandfather sat here in a classroom learning English. He is the young man in the photograph in a row with children half his age. He wears his jacket carefully starched and stiff like a tree reflecting his careful studies in horticulture in France, a renowned institution preparing for his life in this foreign speaking land that promises him a wife who comes later, younger, not a beauty, but she will bear him children who will be educated and learn the musical arts, entertain the family who lives in the mansion on the grounds he tends. And to whom does it matter anymore that my grandmother left her German-speaking home across the sea, to take work, a maid, in that same mansion long gone, along with a house on the grounds where she had her five daughters. The location of the, the homes you can find in the old Sanborn maps at the Historical Society, the librarians happy to carry them out, lay them open for you, brittle the size of the table, and the names and addresses of her half-sister and my grandfather, their occupations, who they worked for all in the city directories. Maybe. You have to look hard for them. If we do the DNA testing, we will not learn any more about them. We know it will come back mostly European, who knows what broken down into percentages adding up to 100. And what does that mean anyway? What I know is where they are buried in the cemetery, how they lived and died, that there is space for me there, everyone else scattering ashes these days. But in the ground beside them, there is more time to learn their secrets. <laughs> Christine, you're, again, another poem that seems to speak to you. It does to me as well, but what, what does this say to you? Well, I, it, a few things. Um, one is is just it's it's wonderful to remember that which may be forgotten for some. You know, it's kind of like the idea of looking out a window and reminding ourselves that we are important. You know, and um, and so I think it's a great tribute um, for for Mari and, and her family. Yeah. But that last line, it 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 speaks to me on so many different on so many different levels. Yeah, there's something more permanent about the stories that are buried yeah. with us in, in many ways, as opposed to just scatter to the wind. Right. Um, I mean, it spoke to me in, in, in many ways, just maybe my family's story is similar to yours, so I, I could definitely identify with what you were writing here, but I, if I had to sit down at a computer or, or pen in hand, I would not know where to start, how to, how to tell the story of my family. So what, what got you to that point, that you wanted to put this in verse? Mm -hmm. Uh, to, to talk about um, your grandfather and your ancestors like this? Well, I've always been interested in family history more so um, 
as people disappear. And, um, and this poem was also inspired, in a way, by um, an exercise we were doing in class. And um, we had, again, I'll mention Sophia. But her poetry was about being in a, a foreign land and trying to adjust to that. And I have a photograph of my grandfather. You know that? Where he was sitting in that classroom. And um, there's a story behind it. There's a story behind Sure. Yeah, yeah every photograph, I guess. So, mm. so as a as a student poet, um, having all these different influences converge at the same time, it, almost a, a stroke of luck or a stroke of lightning, maybe. Um, you had the, the guest poet. You have Christine's influence as your professor and your own uh, willingness to tell a story, all coming together at the same time. I guess, and it, it just seems <coughs> this is kind of a, a succinct way to get your stories down so you know it, for a way okay. to start I still am interested in memoir and personal essay but okay. I like yeah. poetry. <laughs> well, I think and I think you have one more Thank poem you. to share with us right? Um, yeah I can do one okay. more sure. And this has nothing to do with family this is um, actually about a, a total stranger. This is eulogy. A few years back, I didn't know you, but in the harsh sun you caught the corner of my eye, moving along quickly, a determination in your bouncy walk, trying to blend in with a crowd. Midday Los Angeles sun, baking the sidewalk, the din of a busy workday, and on the crowded street, keeping perfect pace with the others. Yet something about your practiced stride, your focus, set you apart. Then I noticed your long, matted brown hair, your dark, heavy coat. No place to safely store it. No place to be invisible except in the middle of all these people on that busy street in broad daylight. An earnestness in the way you kept up with the crowd, hiding in plain sight. Others moved with equal intensity on their way to lunch or shopping, designer handbags and shoes, and a new outfit laid out at home, along with crisp sheets, Wi-Fi, a hot shower and Thai food delivered to be eaten in front of Netflix, maybe out for a drink later, and karaoke. Further downtown, long shadows and the endless sounds of the freeway, furtive glances, glass breaking, singing and voices shouting, shopping carts loaded with tattered discards, bodies settling in for the night in spaces staked out on sidewalks, their eyes watchful. Well, thank you very much. That was a really powerful poem. Thank you, Mari. Um, I want to thank my guest, Mari Spallone, who's a student here at Middlesex Community College, and Christine Ruggiero, professor of English, for joining me today to talk about creative writing. And if you'd like to hear Mari in person and, and hear the other win winners of the Connecticut Poetry Circuit Student Competition, you can join us here at Middlesex Community College on Thursday, March 8th at 4 o'clock for a poetry reading from the winners of the Connecticut Student Poetry Circuit. We also have an open mic and pizza here on campus Wednesday, April 4th at 1230. And a faculty, staff, and student poetry reading Thursday, April 19th at 530. All of those things happening here on our main campus of Middlesex Community College at 100 Training Hill Road in Middletown. Certainly visit us online at mxcc.edu for more information. So for Middlesex Moments, I'm Steve Minkler. We hope you join us again next time.